Pregnancy is the most beautiful thing in a woman's world. However, childbirth can turn a level-headed woman into being very nervous. Contractions can actually give you nightmares as to how you're going to end up in the delivery room screaming in pain or even have a childbirth in the car. Today, we're going to find out if there is a way to keep you more calm and sane during the last part of pregnancy. So don't go anywhere. We started as a group of engineers who uh, were at NASA. And we saw there was a potential to do something beyond what the market had available today. And we thought this is just a fantastic area where we could apply this philosophy into. We want to give information and awareness to people, to government. If you have given chance that you can do something, I think you cannot stop yourself. Take any idea that you have to the next level. Eric, for someone who's non-married, no kids, you founded a company that monitors contractions. How did this come about? So uh, the origin of the company came um, when my co-founder, Julian, and I were previously working at a Belgian-based R&D organization called IMEC. Um, we had been developing advanced wearable devices for both consumer and medical markets for a number of years, and we saw a larger opportunity for leveraging these kind of technologies to um, answer question concerns that people had about their health and at the same time to use this data to inform large unanswered medical questions. And around the same time, Julian's wife got pregnant with their first child, and we saw that no one kind of has more questions and concerns than expecting mom. And on the healthcare side, we thought this is just a fantastic area where we could apply this sort of philosophy into. Well, it must have been quite a feeling to start a company from nowhere, unknown, almost invented this. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background. What got you to this point that you decided to be an entrepreneur? Sure. So um, both my parents work in healthcare, so I've always had a passion for um, healthcare and biomedical engineering. Um, I studied uh, bioengineering at Cornell ended up moving to uh, UCLA to do a PhD in biomedical engineering. Um, after I finished in 2008, when the world was kind of collapsing with the financial crisis, I ended up getting uh, a bit of a lifeline to go work at IMEC, which I mentioned is a Belgian-based R&D organization that does advanced contract research for some of the biggest companies in the world, such as um, Intel, Samsung, Philips. Um, and so while there, I ended up uh, switching into a business development role um, working, starting to work very closely with Julian, and we hit it off. And I just saw that there was so much opportunity within healthcare for new innovation, and so much is changing right now that it just seemed like an obvious area for us to go and apply some of the technology we developed at IMIC into our own, our own company. And the best part is even before you discovered the, or invented the product, uh, you actually knew the ha half the world is your market. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. We've had both sides. I mean, a lot of investors feel that women's health in general is a niche market. And if you're going to go within women's health and pregnancy is even a smaller market. But the fact is that everyone has a mom. Right? Yeah, exactly. So we all come from somewhere. And it's... And multiple it's, times. It, oftentimes, multiple times. Exactly. <laughs> and um, it's, it's an ever-renewing market. It's evergreen, if you could say. There's always going to be more babies in the world. And so we just, yeah, we, we just got excited about the opportunity to answer question concerns for people that had a natural inclination for finding more information. That like desire for a mom to do whatever she can to have a healthy baby is genetic almost, right? It's biologically encoded in us. Right. And I think there's a lot of things you could use because that's there to really just design amazing products. Yeah, like everything else in the world can change, but moms having babies will never change. That's never gonna change. Until such time this world exists. That's right. Now, how does this product work? Um, so what the device can do is it measures various health parameters of the mom and the baby throughout her pregnancy. Um, you've mentioned contractions, but the device can measure much more than that, including uh, movement of the baby, so kick counts, um, fetal heart rate, as, ver as well as various aspects of maternal health. So and it can be worn from the time you get pregnant? From conception to birth. That's the idea. Oh, right okay. now it's focused around the third trimester, but through software updates, algorithm updates, we could we could measure many different things. And so technically speaking, what we do is we measure um, uh, biopotential, so electrical activity of the body, as well as motion. And since the mom's heart's a muscle, the baby's heart's a muscle, the uterus is a muscle, they each produce a, a unique electrical signal. And we can measure that completely non-invasively um, through a little patch that's worn on the belly. And then with signal processing, we filter what's coming from the mom and what's coming from the baby. But every mom is very conscious of what they put in their body and what can be tracked, Absolutely. right? So how have you worked on that? How have you uh, solved that? So the device is completely passive. 
So all we do is listen to the, nat the body's natural bioelectric signals. We don't inject any energy into the body. Ultrasound, as you may be aware of, is actually injecting energy, it's sound energy, and measuring the reflection. You can never use that continuously. That's, that's too dangerous for the baby. Ours is completely non-invasive and passive. So actually, it's much safer than existing technology that's out there. OK, and what happens to the baby when you put the patch? Does it figure out there is somebody that is uh, <laughs> watching? No, I, I don't, we don't have a chance of that. I don't know. That's, maybe that's Gen 2. We don't know what the baby's thinking. Um, but I'm, I'm assuming that because we're not, we're not injecting any energy in, the baby probably doesn't know what's going on. The baby's just in there doing what the baby does. Uh, OK. So you haven't uh, noticed any change in the movement of the baby once you have that patch? No. I mean, it's like, it's like no, the baby wouldn't even know it's there. <laughs> OK. No. Now, is this the first product like that? Or has there been a trial before and it didn't work out? This is, really, this is really one of the first products like this. There have been some existing technologies in the medical space, um, really nothing that's been accessible to moms. And I think that's a larger trend that's happening in healthcare is that um, more technology is coming out that is going direct to consumers to answer their questions. Um, mobile health, of course, is a huge trend. Digital health is a big trend. I think this is just an area that has not seen a lot of innovation, bro more broadly speaking. And I think we're the first one to put um, technology to, again, directly in the hands of the mom that is similar to what they would feasibly um, be able to get um, in the hospital. Well, do you worry about competition? Like somebody will come up uh, soon with a product no. looking like yours and even better it? <laughs> no, uh, you know, competition's good. It means that we're onto something. If there's no competition, then we're probably off on a deserted island somewhere. So we know there's other people working in this space. Um, I feel very confident that we have the best team out there um, to build these kind of technologies. It's not easy. This is very complex devices we're making. And I think we have a clear strategy. And I think we're backed by great investors and partners that are going to help us you know, win the market. Did you have a challenge along the way that uh, you wish was not there? Um, I, don't, I don't know if I can say I wish, I wish there was a challenge that wasn't there, because I think each one of the challenges we face has forced us to get better at whatever we couldn't overcome. And I know it took us a while for us to, for me, really, to figure out how do I package this story together? How do I communicate what we're doing so other people see what I see and what, what we see here, why we've all left our jobs? And I think that's maybe one of the hardest, hardest challenges of an entrepreneur is that you just see things a little bit differently than everyone else, and it's not always easy to get other people to see the same vision you have. And it's about, it's about communication, it's about, it's about storytelling, it's about making an emotional connection. And, and that was something that I really have been working on. I still have a lot of work to do, but um, that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, as we started that slowly we're overcoming. So Julian, it all started because your wife was expecting and having contractions and you figured there has to be something that will monitor this, right? That's right. How did it start? Well, as, as you say, so um, we, were, we were working at a, at a research center called IMEC, uh, developing next generation wearable technologies to track different type of parameters, health parameters. And we saw there was a potential to do something beyond what the market uh, was, had available today, beyond Fitbit, beyond activity tracker, something that really means something to people, consumers, users, but also um, the medical people, doctors. So we were to take the next stage in uh, what wearable technologies could do. We knew we had the technical knowledge to do it, and we were looking for an um, application, a space where we could deliver high-tech wearable technologies that would serve a consumer need, but also serve a medical need. You mentioned that you talked to doctors. What were their reactions? So initially, I think they got very intrigued by all this amount of data that we could collect. Um, so I remember before the company was even born, we, we did some like early recording. Uh, you know, friends who are doctors, you go, you hook it up to a, I was shouldn't say that to a, from a camera, but hook it up to a pregnant moms, <laughs> and they say, hey, this is what we can measure. And they got very excited. Right? I think a lot of doctors have this experimental mind, right? They like to try things. And, and so, yes, yeah, so seeing this early data, seeing what could be measured. I remember one day we had like very early, it was, it was October 2013, we could see like a fatal ECG, a fatal heart rate on, on a trace that we recorded. It was one of the very first prototype we had. That got the doctors super excited. So they really liked it. They saw the potential. Um, so of course they experienced the need, right? They, in their day-to-day -day practice, right? They have to navigate blindly in, in terms of like diagnostics and provide feedback to the mom. She has a lot of questions and he's got very little data. So how, so how, do, how does he handle that? So he sees, the, I think, the, the potential for his day-to-day uh, -day practice and also, uh, yeah, what all that data could mean in terms of clinical research. So 
they got very excited in the concept early on. How are you making it accessible by everyone else? What are you doing to scale it up? To yes. that level that it's an international product? Yeah, yeah. so I think you're right. So you no know, pregnancy is the same everywhere in the world. And uh, uh, so I think that's a great thing about what we do. Um, I think about scaling is also about being realistic. So I think we starting in North America, um, just for, it's, a, it's the biggest single market. Right? It's 4 million at birth here in North America. It's the same language, same regulation. So it's, it's, it's more accessible for a startup to start with one market. Right? Um, but eventually, I mean, we, will, we already are thinking of scaling up internationally. And we are running clinical studies, for example, in Europe today. So it's not only limited here. The sales, the early access program, and our, our launch will be here in the US. But we're already like, engaging with partners in Europe on the clinical uh, trial side. We're having discussions with actors in Asia as well. So we are slowly preparing um, the, um, the international aspects. But again, it's one step at a time. We're a small startup. We are only 15 people. You know, you got to get things right. And then let's first get to North America and have a successful launch here, make sure people love Bloom Life and what we do, that we really answer their needs. And then once we successfully embrace North America, we can go international and probably start to Europe and then, and then Asia. So you're here in San Francisco in the West Portal area, which is like residential. And this is beautiful cottage that uh, is your startup company office. Um, how does that work, working in this environment? Well, this is great. First of all, is the next startup scene. We, we know it, but don't tell it to anyone. It's <laughs> okay, a secret. It's a we'll secret. Keep, keep that between you and I. You don't want the prices to go up. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, it's still the best kept secret in, in San Francisco. So no, I mean, this, this place is, has been great. I mean, we started here. Eric found that place before I even moved here. So it was like we started working here from the very beginning. Um, I think most of the people on the team have uh, stayed at this place. It's kind of, uh, you know, one of the condition to join the Bloom Life team. <laughs> okay. You have to you're gonna sleep this here for <laughs> you're gonna belong to this space. Uh, so <laughs> when I moved here it was like so I moved here in uh, in May twenty fourteen. I stayed here for a month uh, and then uh, and then we've had people staying in this house since then. So it's just rotating. Everybody's uh, mm -hmm. you know it's very convenient to have a um, a, sp uh, a room for people to stay when they come over. But besides this, it's just the atmosphere of the house is great. It's been good, I think, for everything from, from team spirit perspective, from uh, comfort of work, flexibility of work. It's been, uh, it's been fun. Well, uh, As we come down in the years, the street will be called Bloom Life Street. That, that is, that is right. <laughs> All <laughs> That's right, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Anna, it was great. Well, how cool is that? We have a mommy to be who's two weeks away from delivering a baby. So tell me, uh, if you had to put a product like Bloom Life on your tummy to monitor contractions, what would you worry about the most? Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily say worry, but I would just want to make sure that it was accurate, that the information I was getting from it was actually what was going on. Well, let's see you put that on okay. and let's see how easy or tough okay. that is. Sounds good. I'm going to measure um, three fingers below my belly button here and hold it by the, um, the sensor with the blue dot mm -hmm. facing up. And just apply it like that. What would you like to know about the baby while you put that sensor on? For me, the best use of this is to, as a first time mom especially, to have that gray area of, am I really in labor? Do I need to go to the hospital right now? Because here you can wait, you know, five hours in triage sometimes. It would be really good to avoid that. So that would be the best. Well, no matter how many classes you take, you still don't know whether you're in labor or not. And uh, this is something that is helping you uh, understand that, you know, this is time to go, time yeah, to stay. Exactly. Well, that's great. And uh, do you feel any discomfort that it is on you? So no. it's pretty much this invisible and non-feelable person that non -invasive is... Non-invasive at all. Yeah. <laughs> Very easy. Well, that's awesome. So um, when you go into contraction, really, and you really see that uh, beeping, um, do you tell the doctor that uh, something is telling you that it's beeping at the right time? I would look for a trend. So when I go into the doctor, I would show them, this is what I've been experiencing at home. Um, what do you think? I wouldn't go in just for one, um, but I would. I think the value of this is 
seeing a trend over time and being able to show a practitioner. So it's worry-free and uh, you're not worried about the product which is on you if it's affecting the baby because it's already proven to be um, uh, harmless. Um, but it takes the worry out of you that, you know, when you have to be in the hospital, right? Well, good luck to you. I'm happy that you're going to have a baby in two weeks. So Molly, you actually used the product. Were you really having contractions when you used it? Yeah, yeah. I actually used it starting in my second trimester all the way through my third when we were kind of in different beta versions. And I used it actually when I went into labor. I was wearing it the night that I went into labor. I went to bed with it on and I woke up feeling contractions and realized that, yeah, my contractions had kind of taken on a pattern to indicate labor. So I got to use it quite a bit during my during my pregnancy with my daughter. So wait, you said uh, second trimester you started using it. Yeah. What were you expecting at that time? What were you expecting to read at that time? Yeah, I mean, Braxton Hicks contractions, sort of the, the early non-labor inducing contractions can happen, I mean, throughout pregnancy. They kind of start um, more so in the, in the second and then, of course, ramp up in the third. Um, but even just kind of having something that helps you understand what's going on in your body. I know for me, um, this was my second pregnancy. And with my first pregnancy, I didn't think I had any Braxtonix contractions. I never felt them. Um, I just didn't really know what they would feel like. And then with this, having this for my second pregnancy, I started realizing that, yeah, I mean, during pregnancy, you have a, a lot of Braxtonix contractions, and it's totally normal. And it kind of identifying that, oh, I'm feeling this. This is what it looks like in the app. And having that sort of immediate feedback to understand actually what that sensation is that you're feeling. It's kind of um, a good learning tool to kind of understand really what's going on during pregnancy. Well, let's understand this. You have to put it on your tummy mm -hmm. and uh, it's reading the movement inside and you have to have the app open all the time or it gives you a signal that something is happening so then the app pops up or what happens? Well, actually, I mean, the sensor itself is always picking up the information from the body. So what it's doing is it's picking up um, sort of the muscle activity of the uterus and decoding that into what you see in the app. And so since the sensor is always working to pick up, you know, you can have the app open if you want to really see it in real time, feel it, see it there. Uh, but it doesn't need to be open to do a recording. You can kind of have it on to do a recording. And then once it connects, once it sort of wakes up and connects with the app, you can really see um, the whole session that you've been, for the time you've been wearing it. So is there any kind of an alert setting that, you know, it beeps when you are really having a contraction and you didn't feel it? Uh, there isn't an alert um, now. You know, we kind of like the idea of it being kind of behind the scenes, quiet uh, listener, so that when you want to check in, you have that ability to peek in and look. If you want to be really active with it, you know, you can be having it sort of open and watching to kind of confirm that feeling. But, you know, if you do feel something in the op and you open the app, chances are you're, you're still going to catch that contraction. Um, and if you really want to use it as a learning tool, you can kind of keep an eye on it and try to see if, how that corresponds to what you're feeling. But there's no, there's no little <laughs> button that shows up that says you're having a contraction. Okay. <laughs> well, um, you're communicating with moms and the community. So what mm -hmm. has been your findings so far with the um, product? Yeah, I mean, the feedback has been really cool to see. Um, people are really enjoying it. You know, we kind of have this spectrum of moms who are using it really as similar to me, where they really want that, that understanding of what um, sensations are in their body. We have moms who use it um, because, you know, they've experienced early contractions in, in their pregnancy and they just, they want an objective second opinion in a way to really kind of capture, you know, this is what is going on in my body. This is a better way to track it. Well, we keep hearing doctors say, hey, you have to be calm. You know, that's the most important thing when you're pregnant or yeah. delivering, right? Yeah. Um, does this make you a little overexcited? You come to know about the contractions. Does it have any effect on your mind that, you know, it suddenly makes you more perky that you're having <laughs> contractions? Um, I think there's a lot of, uh, I think it's actually on the contrary. I think there's a lot of power in really understanding your body and feeling more comfortable in what the signals are in your body. We've heard a lot of moms say that this gives them peace of mind. And it's really, you know, having something to confirm, to validate what they're feeling that isn't just them, you know, worrying, oh, what, is this a contraction? Is this gas? Is this the baby moving? You know, they actually have a tool that says, yeah. 
this is a contraction and you know this is what it looks like this is what the pattern is and so they can really get a better feel for you know is this something that I need to be kind of paying closer attention to or is this something that's just totally normal for my pregnancy it's a very personalized tool you know to kind of communicate and help them translate what's going on in their body do you have a little story for us someone who used it and came and thanked you oh my god this is the best thing ever yeah we heard a story the other day from um, a mom who was with her sister at the time and she started feeling contractions and so they started timing them and they said oh well we have we have bloom life so just put it on and you know it turned out she was having some some back labor which means the contractions are felt in the back instead of in the front and they're really hard to time because you don't really know when they start you don't really know when they end and because she had she put bloom life sensor on it, it took that all out of you know out of the picture it did it for her and so she didn't have to worry about you know getting the timing right so how accurate is this yeah, so it's been tested against what's used in the hospital. And so we've had multiple um, clinical tests around how does, how does Bloom Life compare to the TOCO, and it matches up really well in accuracy. And it obviously stores everything in the app that you, go, you can go back in history. Yeah, yeah, so it has a history feature. So every session that's recorded, you go into sort of the, into the history view, and you can see all of the stats for each recording session that you've done. You can see the actual graph for each recording session that's done and you can really get a feel for how your pattern is changing so you wow. can really see that that shift uh, in my own data which you know as a scientist I find very cool so. and that's the first history of the baby the baby's first movement yeah. when it's coming out so now we don't have to have baby recorded from the time of birth you can yeah. actually have it from behind and yeah. that's awesome